I'm going to continue debunking this claim until people stop making it. Folks will still say that the Second Amendment should only apply to muskets because that's somehow all the Founding Fathers could have possibly imagined at the time of the ratification. Which is really stupid because at the time of the ratification of the Second Amendment, there existed firearms such as the Puckle Gun, patented in 1718, the world's first Gatling gun. There was also the Kalfoff Repeater, which was capable of firing between 30 and 60 rounds a minute. Some could even fire 29 rounds without reloading, similar to the modern-day AR-15. Similarly, you had the belt and flintlock. And in a somewhat funny design, you have the pepper box revolvers that could shoot a tremendous number of bullets with one pull of the trigger. And did they just forget that they had cannons at the time? Which, by the way, if you read the letters of Marquis and Repraisal, the Founding Fathers were 100% in support of individuals owning cannons, and in fact said you can outfit your private vessel to become a battleship. Don't flex your historical ignorance. Two conflicting cases involving machine guns are now in the court system. This will become a showdown at the Supreme Court. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Farms LLC. PAN Farms, your NRA certification of multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203 300 or use our website at www.panfarmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. If you like channel, like content, what I do here, you can support me. The link, everything is appreciated. And once again, if your comment disappears, I'm not doing it. This is a growing problem on this platform with their new policy. So they're just removing comments without notification, especially gun related channels. So if I take your comment away, I'll tell you. Let's talk about this. And if you remember, I talked about the case of Tamari Morgan out of Kansas, where the judge in that case stated that the case was going to be dismissed because the defendant had a constitutional right because machine guns are bearable arms. What's interesting is there's two things going on here. One, obviously, the federal prosecutors are now bringing this to the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals because they're saying this judge got it wrong in Kansas. And at the same time, there's another case, U.S. versus Christopher Chan, which is also based on the same premise as the Kansas case where a person was in possession of Glock switches and modified firearms that were basically made the machine guns. And that judge, this is out of Hawaii, has said, no, the gun ban upholds, so you're still gonna be prosecuted for it. And this, of course, is going to lead to a clash between these two cases going all the way up to the Supreme Court. I'm gonna briefly go into this here, but, but this is the Kansas case where the federal prosecutors are now appealing the Kansas judge's decision. Okay, a month after the federal judge dismissed machine gun possession charges in Kansas based on the Second Amendment, federal prosecutors are appealing to the 10th Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. Tomori Morgan had been indicted by a grand jury on April 2023 in U.S. District Court in Wichita. Those two counts of unlawful possession of a machine gun were dismissed August 21st by U.S. District Judge John Brooms. Bruins wrote that the prosecution fails to meet its burden to demonstrate that possession of types of weapons at issue in the case are lawfully prohibited under the Second Amendment. He argued the bearable arms aspect. But prosecutors filed the appeal with the 10th Circuit on April, September 20th, but as of Wednesday, has not yet filed documents detailing their arguments. Now, the person who wrote this is obviously a little bit of a leftist because then they come down to here. I just want to briefly touch on this where they say, can you own a machine gun in Kansas? You can, just like any place else that allows this. But this person tries to say that machine guns are generally illegal in Kansas and the rest of the United States. Yes, if they were made after 1986. That's the premise of these cases against these people. But I'm going to bring you over to here. Okay, this is the Hawaii case, U.S. versus Christopher Chan. In a recent case out of Hawaii, a U.S. District Court has upheld a federal gun ban denying a motion to dismiss the indictment of Christopher Chan, who was charged with unlawfully possessing 
a machine gun and a short barrel rifle. Judge Derek Watson, appointed by President Obama, ruled that these types of firearms are not protected under the Second Amendment. While the court's decision isn't surprising given the political landscape in Hawaii, it raises critical issues about how the Second Amendment is being interpreted today. I'm going to get briefly into Chan because tomorrow Morgan I have spoken about. The case stems from an incident where Christopher Chan was found in possession of a short barrel rifle and a machine gun. These are firearms that under the National Firearms Act must be registered, and in this case, they weren't. Now, the short barrel rifle he could register, but the machine gun, unless it was manufactured before 1986, he could not. So they're not saying what that machine gun is. Was it just a Glock switch? What, what are we dealing with here? They're not making that clear. But Chan's legal team argued that the charges violated the Second Amendment rights, asserting that these firearms are arms protected by the Constitution. They also challenged the Commerce Clause, arguing that Congress didn't have the authority to regulate the possession of these firearms. However, Judge Washington's decision struck down both arguments, claiming that neither the short barrel rifle nor the machine gun falls within the scope of the Second Amendment's protection. Hmm. This rule is significant because it highlights the ongoing tension between federal gun laws and the constitutional right to bear arms. Now, there's these two cases that are going to be in direct conflict with each other as they come up the court system is going to end up Supreme Court. Now we have Bruin. How is the court going to look at this? with that. And of course, it's going to take years for it to get there, but this is pivotal. We have two cases in same ideal, same charges, unlawful possession of machine gun coming up the court system in direct conflict with each other. And it's going to end up the Supreme Court. And how would the Supreme Court handle this? Could this be the turning point of overturning the NFA? But these are two cases we got to keep an eye on. As they said in the Kansas case, it has been filed with the 10th Circuit Court and arguments are going to be heard. In the Hawaii case, nothing has been listed as going forward at this time. So you know they're going to appeal it to the next level. So it's going to be interesting to watch both these cases come in conflict with each other at the Supreme Court. This is going to be one of those pivotal cases, both of them. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace.